Hey, welcome back to our book talks. I'm Mrs. Mestre, librarian at Chinook Middle School. I'm Ms. Bixihi, librarian at Evergreen High School. I'm Ms. SL, librarian at Sylvester. And I'm Ms. Gunn, librarian at Highline High School. All right, so we have a whole bunch of books today because we can never just choose one, right? Um, that celebrate Asian Pacific Heritage Month. So who wants to start? I don't mind starting because I um, I purchased two copies of Jen Wang's Stargazing and a lot of people know her previous very popular um, The Prince and the Dressmaker. Did I reverse the title? I do that sometimes. <laughs> um, and I just want to give such a big shout out for this book. And now, of course, I've lost my little tab that has the picture on it. I am just a hot mess, guys. Um, anyway, it's a graphic novel, and it is about um, two Chinese-American friends. They become friends, um, but I love it because it highlights how one, uh, one is named Moon and one is named Christine, and they're they're from a similar cultural background, but they couldn't be more different. And I love that message of, you know, they, they share some very specific um, uh, experiences and understandings um, just from the way they were raised as uh, Chinese Americans, but then that they get to be portrayed as individuals and also it's a, it's a very much a book about middle school friendship and um, what a vulnerable time that is for friendships. Um, I, I don't wanna give too much away, but, but Moon sees things that other people don't. And Christine is uh, kind of more straight laced or focused, has a lot of pressure on her to succeed. And I think the balance they bring to each other, but also ultimately the support without giving too much away makes this an incredible, incredible story. So that's my first one. Okay. Anybody want to jump in? I'll go can, with, oh, go, sorry, I'm going to butt in. I'm going to go. go. Uh, I have lately been liking to pull older books out for these conversations. Um, and so this is a book, oh gosh, I think 2007 is when I first learned about it. Um, but it's called Telesa by Lanny Went Young. And it is, um, takes place in Samoa primarily, which I, um, I think all of us sort of struggle to find books that have Samoan characters or Pacific Islander characters that aren't Hawaii. Um, so anyways, this one is, it's a fantasy, also romance. So our main character, her name is Layla, and she was born in Samoa. Her mother is Samoan and her father is from the U.S., but her mother died when she was a little girl and so was taken back to the U.S. by her dad and raised in sort of the Washington, D.C. area. And then as a 17-year-old, her father has passed away. And basically his dying wish was like, do not ever go to Samoa. And of course, as a 17 year old wants to do like the exact opposite that their family tells her to do. So she does make arrangements to go and visit family, um, but is not super welcomed. Her auntie and uncle that she stays with are a little bit, um, not cold exactly, but not particularly welcome, welcoming and they're very strict and send her to school in Samoa, which actually turns out to be kind of a good thing because that's where she meets Daniel, the really, really gorgeous guy. Um, but we learn pretty quickly in the book that things from her past are not what they've seen. And uh, her mother actually did not die, but was sort of shunned from the family because she is a Talesa, which is um, from Samoan mythology. And it's women who have particular powers that are tied to earth elements. So like air, fire, et cetera. Um, and they have a particular purpose for what they are sort of destined to do. And so now Layla has to sort of figure out where she fits in all of this. Um, so it's really great fantasy if you like mythology, um, which I think Ms. Mesher is gonna talk some more about some mythologies, um, but I really appreciate learning about other cultural mythologies than what I grew up knowing about. You know, we get really schooled and sort of Greek and Roman and 
Egyptian mythologies, but you know, every culture has their story. Um, so I learned a lot from that. And also just the romance was very, very fun if you like that sort of thing. Um, and it's the first in a trilogy. So if you enjoy it, you continue to follow these two characters for the rest of the series. So super recommend. So Ms. Gunn, um, is the author Pacific Islander, do you know? I believe so. And I think that she is related to, um, there's a well-known Samoan writer, I think his first name is Albert Went. Um, and it's, I'm now blanking on the books that he has written, but I believe that she is connected to him in some way. Yeah. Okay. Cause it is so difficult to find um, authors who are Samoan Absolutely. Pacific Islander and for our, for our kids. Yep. And thank you. Um, as we we're all talking, we're all pointing out like different Asian cultural backgrounds that these books draw from because it's really easy to get stuck into like a loop and we're just reading the same thing. So I think it's really exciting that there's so many options. And I keep hoping that there will be more Pacific Islander books. But um, something I didn't bring up earlier, The Reader by Tracy Chi is fantasy and it's based on um, like Malaysian, Malaysian culture and it's not mythology based. Like it is, it is like high fantasy magic elements, but it is based on like a mythological Malaysia with islands and travel and pirates and all of that. And I'm going to meet myself. Okay, so I will um, talk about the book that I just recently read. It's called The Magic Fish and it is a graphic novel by uh, Trung Lee win and it is such a sweet story um, about a mother and a son and the mother is a Vietnamese refugee and her son was born in the U.S. born and raised so they they live in different worlds she is very um, misses her homeland very much and misses her mom who still lives there. And then her son um, is very much an American and um, their nightly ritual is to read fairy tales out loud. And it's really to get his mom to practice her English, but he often ends up reading them out loud. And um, the story is really told like in three different times and places and the way it's depicted in the graphic novel is in three different um, colored panels. So you know how time, how the story is told in the past is, is in one color and then which is really his mom and you can see sort of that trauma that she experienced in leaving Vietnam and then the present and then also these fairy tales that are told are in a different color. And um, there's three different fairy tales are told, um, a Cinderella story, the Vietnamese Cinderella story, and then the Little Mermaid. Um, so her, those, those fairy tales kind of mimic um, the struggles that the characters are enduring at the, um, in the present. So the mom who is really missing Vietnam and her mother who is sick. And then her son who is struggling to come out gay um, to, to his mom. And he has a small friend group and there's one uh, friend of his who he has a little bit of a crush on. Um, but they, his friends have kind of figured out that he is gay, but he he feels like he really needs to talk to his mom about it because they are close. Um, but he doesn't even sure that there is a word for for gay in Vietnamese. So um, the the afterward um, that the author wrote um, described that when he was growing up, he and his parents would read fairy tales to each other um, in that in practicing English. But the, something that he really wanted to emphasize is that this, this is an immigrant story. And the story that we often hear is like the beginning and the end of the immigrant, immigrant story. But there's so much in between 
that keeps on going. There's the story is never over of the immigrant. And um, so anyway, it was just such a sweet story. And I, the way that the colors are used to tell the, the where the story is taking place and when is really helpful in understanding each of the characters. So it was just really good. That sounds really great. I, I just want to read fairy tales with someone. <laughs> But I, I did finally find my my picture of stargazing, so I, I figured I'd jump in while Miss McShee was still talking about a graphic novel. But my next book, because everybody I think thinks I only read either graphic novels or fantasy, is a realistic fiction. What? I have a realistic fiction on my list. Aren't you all proud of me? I'm growing. Um, and it is I'll Be the One by... Lila Lee. And I, I don't know if you can see it very well. I love the cover of this book because um, the model that they got is just so joyful. And and she does not fit the traditional um, standards of beauty. And that is kind of the, the purpose or the part of the plot of the book is um, Sky is the main character and she is she is a larger girl. She is Korean and she wants to be in a K-pop group. So she enters a competition to be in a K-pop group and thinks, you know, she's not going to make it. And then she's going to take a stand and talk about, you know, how how big girls are ignored and things like this. But she makes it to the the finals, I guess. But then there's all kinds of stuff that she's dealing with in that world that kind of perpetuate that 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 body type. Um Especially, um, you know, it talks about in Korean culture how uh, pressured young young women are to to look a certain way. Um, but there's all it's it's also very fun and funny. And I know a lot of our students in Highline very much like K-pop, and they like. Um, I mean, there are what there are at least a million mangas now that deal with some sort of competition that either leads to being a, a pop star or you know something something similar to that so it's it's big fun um definitely humor romance but but some serious issues covered and i i just i really enjoyed reading about a character who knows her worth and um wasn't gonna let you know if if you liked like dumplin and and all this this is this is a good book to read too the K-pop thing made me think of uh, a book by Maureen Gu called Somewhere Only We Know, I think is the right one, um, that also involves a K-pop star. Um, but this is also just my general shout out for everything that Maureen Gu has written because I really love her. What do you have, Kim? I was just thinking, yes, Maureen Gu. That's who, I mean, you were talking about that. I was like, yeah, Somewhere Only We Know. Um, so. I have, I'm going to bring us back to the land of fantasy because there's so many, when we are talking about like exposure of mythologies, like there's so many good world mythologies that are finally being written about. And um, so I have two that are both published by the Rick Riordan Presents imprint by Disney Hyperion. But so they probably get, they get a lot of press because they're published by Rick Riordan Presents. Like, so they get a lot of press. However, they're also super excellent. Like if you are a fan of Percy Jackson and you know that that is like a genre, Percy Jackson fans are a genre, like um, Arusha, Arusha and the End of Time by Roshana Chakshi is based on different Indian stories. And it is just as adventurous as Percy Jackson with a really plucky female main character. And the fourth book just came out. Um, like this week. So it's like a good read alike series. Um, and if you like it, like that author has written some older adventure fantasy books. So like, it's a good, like, she's a good author to know. And then City of the Plague God by Sarwat Chada just came out in February. And this one's based on Sumerian mythology, which Sumer is part of Mesopotamia. And I guess it's like, it brings out all my nerdy former history teacher, like stuff, like the bottom of the page is cuneiform. It's got like a line of Hammurabi's code written in cuneiform. Ooh, 
find out what it means at the very end of the book. Like, it's just like, it's super geek. Like I geek out so bad. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but City of the Plague God almost wasn't published because it was supposed to come out and then uh, COVID happened. And like, we've had a global, you know, a pandemic. But so there was some fear that like, it would be too triggering. And, but like any Percy Jackson book, the hero overcomes and like it has, you know, you know, based on mythology, it's going to have like a good triumphant ending. But it's really like New York is destroyed by a plague and there's zombies and talking rats. <laughs> but it's really fun and it celebrates like um, culture. Also talks a little bit about like Zoroastrianism. Like again, like because Asia is not just East Asia. It's this whole giant landmass with lots of culture and lots of history. Anyway, I was just looking at some notes and books I wrote down, and I get so excited about these, like, because in Cell, I do only read fantasy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, read everything, but... I know that. I know that's not true, Miss Besher. <laughs> but there's, like, some really, really excellent fantasy based on, like, um, Arab legends and Arab folk tales and some non, uh, science fiction based on like let's reimagine the desert and Persia and just like so there's some really awesome stuff out there. Um, Miss McChahey you had some others. Yes yeah, so um, another different part of Asia um, the Philippines um, a realistic story of um, called Patron Saints of Nothing and this is also a project lit book and um, it's the story of um, a Filipino American who is was very close with his cousin who lived in the Philippines um, and now lives in America, but they lost touch. And then he finds out that his cousin has died. And he feels really guilty because he doesn't really understand his Filipino background or that side of the family at all. Um, or the culture or anything. And so he goes to visit and um, people don't really wanna talk about what happened to his cousin, um, how he died, um, where he was living. His, his cousin was sort of ostracized from the family. And I learned a lot about the politics that, um, and the government that, um, is happening in, currently in the Philippines with, um, what's the ruler's name? Duarte. Yes, thank you. With Duarte. And just the, the very violent and uh, regime that overrules um, everything. And it's, it's almost like brainwashed um, the people that live there. And so it's a real awakening for him um, on not only like where he comes from, but he tends, he begins to understand his family a little bit more, um, from that experience. So highly recommend, um, patron saints of nothing. I've got one last one that is, um, you know, I think some of the things with like appreciating diversity and cultural backgrounds is also just like having stories that are just like everyday stories, but including casts of characters from all backgrounds, right? And so I feel like super fake love song, um, David Yoon does this, um, oops. Um, Cause in, in a lot of ways, it's just like your sort of standard teen um, story, but like there's a whole cast of diverse characters in it. Um, the main two characters are from Korean American families, uh, but the main guy, his name is Sonny. And he um, is introduced to a girl named, I think it's pronounced Cirrus or Cyrus, I'm not entirely sure, um, who is the daughter of like some business associations of his parents. Um, and she happens to, he's like really like, oh my gosh, she's so cool. And he's a total self-proclaimed nerd who's like into, um, he and his friends like do these videos where they like make um, gadgets that are part of like bringing video game characters and things like to life where they like actually make the thing to do for like um cosplay or that's not the word that I'm looking for but like when you like in real life play the games I don't know if there's a word for that uh, anyways 
So he's like kind of blown away by how cool this girl is. And she RPG. 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 Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Uh so but she happens to catch, like she sees him sitting in his brother's bedroom. And his brother is a guitar player and has been in bands for a number of years. So like the room looks very like rock star cool. And she assumes it's his room. And so assumes that he is the like rock star cool. And he's like, oh yeah. I, I'm in a band and like totally lies to her and then has to like go along with this and convinces his two best friends to actually form a band where they're going to learn how to play and like play at the like battle of the bands for the high school talent show. And it's just like kind of ridiculous, but his two best friends are really great characters. Like the stuff going on with the girl is really great. He and his brother have this kind of weird relationship that we learn more about. So it's really just like friendship, family, romancy kind of story couched in this like you know he's gonna get caught like clearly it's gonna come out that he did not really start off in a band um but it's just really fun along the way so highly can enjoyed I, can I just say Miss Gunn I'm so glad you you brought that one up because you all know that how much I loved frankly in love by David Yoon the same mm -hmm. author and I just love that he does take things that seem like they almost seem like sitcom plots or right. or whatever but he brings like a freshness to them and I just I eat it up I love it I love it so much probably because the characters seem so genuine that you just like them and you feel for them and you 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 relate to them so well um anyway I just I love that book too <laughs> good characters are good characters Miss that's all exactly um, Okay, so there's also, okay, I feel like this is a topic where I could just keep like geeking out about books all day, but if anybody wants additional book suggestions, they can reach out to us and they can get more and we can make personalized recommendations. And so I think we're going to wrap it up today. And thank you for joining. It's Ms. Okay. Shahi. Off to your meeting, everyone. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.